Okay, you lovely people, now that I've got your attention about the Prophet Muhammad marrying Aisha when she was only six, peace be upon him. Now listen to this. A little bit of your own history. Richard II took Isabella of France in 1360 something when she was seven. Now you can understand. What about is a red flag? Prophets did this kind of stuff and it wasn't because they wanted to marry them for lust or any other reason. It was actually because of political grounds and reason. I understand why you look at it in the way that you do look at it because today's terms it's looked at, looked at as from a disgusting level but then isn't everything sexualized these days aren't women sexualized and treated in a disgusting manner in 1200 king john married isabella who was 12. why because she was royal and because she was a sole heiress in fact child marriage in that age in that era was but was it consummated this is an important detail as well nine ten eleven years old because it was okay to do that and particularly okay to do it in monarchs, the monarchy, um, kings, prophets, call them what you like. And there was other reason behind it. Not Kings, prophets, those are <laughs> serious distinctions. Lust or desire or personal passions. Now let's look at today. We live in an over-sexualized culture and low self-esteem where body consciousness is a thing you know and where girls aren't even 13 and young as that who are wearing and dressing and acting sexually whoa victim blaming interesting actually like that's the reality of the life today how can you knock what was going on back then and the reasoning for it it was a thing that happened back then. Anyway, I am not, and people don't understand the reason and understanding that I have. And for somebody so intelligent to accept, and would I accept, is even not even a question to ask me. Because it's all about the intention, and I wasn't there during that period. Whoa, okay. So depending on the intention, a six-year-old's okay. And I can understand what the intention was, because I understand what the prophet was like. I can even begin to understand why kings may marry young women because, you know, it's a, it's a connection of families. There's always politics, there's always financial reasoning behind it. Nothing to do with the actual reason of marrying somebody. The reasons these days, in fact, these days, nobody wants to get married. Okay, let's look at the days now. You're generally looking at 18 before anyone can get married. In fact, I think the UK, you can do it 16 if you've got parent consent. But if you look at some places in the USA, as long as they've got parents consent and there's a reason for the marriage, they're allowed to marry minors. Um, yeah, I'm gonna need a source on that one. And some people do it because of desire. So it is easy to take the high moral ground when you are looking at Muslims because that seems to be the attention these days in demonizing <sighs> what is that um high moral ground well everyone's morality is higher than others they feel that way or else they wouldn't subscribe to it i think the reason for bringing it up is to figure out whether this these two ideologies are compatible with each other or your particular ideology is compatible with the west for example a country that you live in that would judge these practices that you endorse actually so difficult to explain to people whose minds are closed and blinkered and exp open your mind to the six-year-old marriage that's based Exploited. hard to explain it's easy to look at isolated places but when you look on your own doorstep and you look around you and what's supposed to be the western civilized culture you can look at the usa and out of hey whoa you talking crap okay get Head out, go to go to a Muslim country where you can, you know, live in peace, practice your God how you want to. Go for it. You have the right to do that. 45, there's 45 states as of 2023 who are even allowing girls as young as 14 to get married. Anyway, things have moved on significantly. As young as 14. Now there's a moral standard. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. At least since then, and you can't do it anymore, can you? So stop looking at what was and look at what is and close the topic. But why do people keep bringing it back up again? And only for certain, certain groups without looking on their own doorstop. Anyway, I'm just trying to make a point here. All right, because people have asked the question. 
it's hot in Morocco. Yeah, you need to. You should probably stay in Morocco where you can do that in peace. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not one of these people where if you don't like it, get out. But I'm just saying there's a serious incompatibility there. Um, and you know, and I'm just I'm I'm speechless. She's like, I'm trying to make a point. I don't see where your point was. That doesn't really make a ton of sense to me. I died show when she was six years old. Well, let me tell you a little secret. It's not true. I got a really interesting email this morning about this, so I thought I'd address it because it's not only Islamophobic, it's also been used in political systems to justify the lowering of the legal age of marriage. But let me tell you something about Islam. Unless it's in the Quran, then it doesn't escape infallibility. Quran alone is the infallible word of God. And in the Quran, marriage is only legitimate when it is entered by two consenting adults. And more importantly... Wait... So if a six-year-old consents, then it's okay? Importantly, it's the woman who gets to choose her spouse. Now, in a time like the 5th and 6th century in the Saudi Arabian desert, there was no such thing as a birth registry or celebrating a birthday. So people just basically estimated their own age. A person was considered an adult once they passed through puberty. And by the way, 500... Um, what about like the seasonal cycles? Like, I don't think that this was like you know, a million years ago, Islam was established, you know, 600 AD. So that's odd. 100 years after Muhammad, that was still true in Europe, which is why it was okay for the 35-year-old King John of England to marry an 11-year-old Isabella of Angoulême. But here's the thing. This image of a corrupt, sinful, philanderous Muhammad fits perfectly inside a broader Islamophobic Orientalism. It's given <laughs> what? King Crusades. The Catholic Church did everything in its power to paint this image of a sinful, lustful, false prophet. They had done all the work to create this immaculate image of a perfect Messiah, Jesus Christ, Son of God. The guy was born of a virgin, for God's sake. So, by extension, the religion of this sinful philanderer, Islam, stood no chance against the religion of the archetype of. Um, yeah, the reason they're compared is because Muhammad is the moral standard for all Muslims for all time. So there's an, an actual reason for that. Celibacy. So ultimately, we get these ideas from threatened Christian patriarchs. But let me tell you some more interesting stuff. Christians are the patriarchs? Christians are nothing compared to the patriarchs in Islam. Stuff ...about Muhammad that we actually know. Because it's really funny how we always rush to talk about how he married a six-year-old, but we never talk about... Oh, wait, so he... Did or he didn't? Because in the beginning of the video, she said he didn't. About his first wife, the one we actually know was his wife, and who, very interestingly, was the first Muslim. There is no dispute that Aisha was his wife as well. Her name was Khadija, and she was a business owner when Muhammad still had nothing in his own name. She had heard of his journey into the cave. He had come to her seeking solace after the vision. She was 15 years his senior. He was 25, she was 40, and she proposed to him she actually sent her friend to ask him um in the quran category one post menses category two haven't had any menstrua menstruation because of immaturity yeah um i was gonna go to the hadith where it plainly says that she was six years old but the quran is good too but yeah that's it's 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 insane mentioned never had sex with her the english duke mentioned he never had sex with her yeah yeah and i mean one of the things that i was gonna kind of talk about is the fact that if this is the case and there are way more christians on earth than there are muslims and supposedly you know there isn't any substantial amount of evidence for child marriage in islam why isn't there the same proportion at least of you know child marriage and let's adjust for you know economics in Christianity as well. I don't know, we, we don't see it. For some reason, this is an Islamic practice. And if he would be okay being with a woman who had her own money. It was a whole thing, it's super cute, go read about it. But let's circle back to Aisha. Because when Khadija passed away, Muhammad was heartbroken. But he was friends with a man named Abu Bakr, who had a daughter that was coming of age. And because marriage and- Coming of age, that's subtle right there. She just went, she just went past that real quick. Six years old is coming of age? Six years old as dolls, and you know you you've been talking for like three years. Those days typically served political and social functions. Muhammad was wed to Aisha to solidify his relationship with Abu Bakr. And guess what? Aisha was no wallflower. She led troops in battle and was known for her. 
Uh, was that when she was six years old? I don't think so. Temper and her mischievous sense of humor. She was a stateswoman, scholar, mufti, and judge. And this whole Islamophobic narrative that paints her as some kind of victim is honestly just an insult to one of the most powerful women in Islam. Aisha, Aisha, Eku. Yeah, put on your hijab if you love Islam so much. You know, just saying. It was even in the BBC documentary years ago. Yeah, BBC was expo BBC was on their job exposing a lot of Islam, to be honest. But they haven't done it. In they don't do it anymore. You don't see that anymore. You do not see it anymore. Just wanted to pop in. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on notifications. Also, consider becoming a channel member. You'll get exclusive content no one else gets to see. Also, you'll be able to see the content before everybody else. This really helps me on my cause of talking about stuff no one else wants to talk about. Maybe if it's a documentary or just on location reporting, it helps fund all that stuff. So if not, no big deal. All love. Peace.